This is going to be my first doll makeover and I'm going to turn this rough looking Claudine Wolf doll into a cottagecore doll. Let's go! First things first, let's get rid of this matted hair. With scissors I'm going to cut off as much as I can. Now that this is done, we can move on to removing the head from the body. Let's dunk her into some hot water to soften up her head. After a minute or so, the hot water has softened the vinyl and the head should come off easily. If you do attempt this, make sure to use a towel to not burn your hands. While the head is still soft and pliable, I am going to go in with some long nose pliers to remove the remaining hair plugs by gently scraping the inside of the head. All the hair is removed and I can move on to removing the factory paint from her face and scalp. For this I'm going to use pure acetone. Once all that is removed, I'm going to give her some ear surgery. This is quite a thing to be doing for a first doll makeover, but here we are. I'm cutting off the ears that are on top of her head. I will be then gluing them to the side of her head. I have this orange cotton thread that I'll be using to stitch up the holes where the ears were. I haven't seen this done before, but I didn't want to use any clay to patch the holes in her head because I didn't want to reroute her hair. Once I've stitched going in one direction, I'm going to sew in the opposite direction to make a weave-like pattern. This may not be the prettiest solution, however, you won't be seeing any of this when the doll is done. And some advantages of this technique is that you can reroute if you're using yarn strand by sewing it through the weave and it stays flexible as you can see. I'm using Vallejo model paint to paint her scalp. I like using this paint as it is a high quality acrylic paint and it also stays flexible. This is the yarn I'm going to be using. I'm going to do a complete reroute and her hair is going to be a lot, but I love it so much. I hope you do too. The rerouting tool I'm using is an old X-Acto knife holder. I've cut off the eye of a needle on an angle and this works perfect for rerouting projects. Because this yarn is so thick, I won't be using glue inside the head. They will stay put as they are. For the stitched up ear holes, I'm going to use a crochet needle to get in between the stitches. Then weave through a strand, make sure I have the middle and tie a knot to secure it in place. And here we have the entire head done. I love this big hair so much. And as you can see, or rather not see, the stitched up ear holes are not visible anymore. Time to put her head back on her body.
just tying her hair up so I can attach the ears to the side of her face. I did add some epoxy clay where the new ears join her side of her face just to make them more secure. I will blend them in later with paint and chalk pastels. I wanted to give her a typical cottage court dress, apron and shawl. I'm starting with her dress. I found this pattern in a miniature clothing book and I altered the pattern ever so slightly to fit my doll. I'm not a seamstress, but I can sort of sew a straight line and in the end I think this turned out pretty good. So I'm showing you a little bit of the process here. To give this dress its shape, I stitched a simple running stitch through the neckline, waist and the end of the sleeves. I then put the dress on the doll and pull the stitches to gather the fabric so the dress is ruffled and fitting to the doll. I feel like the base of the dress needed something so I'm adding this piece of ruffled lace. Here I have the apron and the dress all finished, at least for the sewing part. The apron is going to get a little design painted on it with fabric paints. First I'm going to sketch out my design with pencil. I'm going to give it a cute mushroom design on the pockets and on the base of the apron. Using fabric paints by Montmartre and if I can find them I will leave a link to them in the description box below as well as all the other supplies that I'm using in this video. I was set on making her a crocheted miniature shawl, so here we are. This took about as long as creating a real size shawl. A lot of time and work went into it. I also added a beaded fringe and sewed on some extra beads in the scarf itself to give it a little something extra. I'm extremely happy with how this shawl turned out, but you'll have to stay tuned until the end to see the end result. I show you a small part of the process here, but most of it is done off camera. I kept her shoes simple. I 3D printed these shoe bases. They can be found on Thingiverse. But a simple faux leather base and straps over the toes and around the ankles. These buckles from jump rings and a small piece of wire and they will be the buckles for the ankle straps.
finishing her outfit, it's time to work on the doll. I received these beautiful soft pastels from my friend Unbridled Artistry here on YouTube. I will leave the link in the description box. And I'm starting by adding some blushing and shading to her body after giving her a spray with Mr. Super Clear. I wanted her to have a st very strong blush over her nose and cheeks, speckled with white freckles to sort of resemble mushroom freckles. The rest of the face up I'm keeping kind of neutral to fit in with the natural feel of the college core vibes. I hope to eventually get better at drawing eyes, but I'm pretty happy with the end result for the very first doll I'm making. Finishing her nails with a layer of gold paint, they will go nicely with all the other subtle gold accents in her outfit. For her main accessory, I wanted to give her a basket of apples. I decided to make a crocheted basket with a blanket in there with apples. I put a piece of cardstock in the base, which I covered with fabric so the basket keeps its shape.
basket was a little too white for my liking, so I dunked it in this mix of coffee and baking soda, the baking soda to take away the acidity of the coffee. I rinsed it and let it air dry, and we now have a nice beige basket. Lastly, I created some apples from polymer clay to go inside the basket. Let's see what the final doll looks like. And here is the final doll, Meet Meadow. I absolutely love how she turned out. I'm pretty proud of my very first doll repaint and makeover. Meadow is now up for adoption on my Etsy store. The link can be found in the description box below, as well as all my other social media. If you like this kind of video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. It really helps my channel out and lets me know to make more doll makeovers in the future. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!